Over the last few years, computer science has absolutely exploded in popularity and has become one of the most popular majors at every university across the United States. But should you actually still major in computer science? I personally faced this exact decision two years ago where I knew nothing about computer science and ended up switching my major from psychology to business and then from business once again to computer science, which I eventually stuck with, graduated, and now work full time as a software engineer at Figma. To help you answer this question, I'll be doing a deep dive into what the computer science major is and isn't and sharing some of my personal experiences around it. I'll also be sharing some of the possible career paths that you can take and what I've learned to be good or bad reasons to actually pick the major. If you don't know who I am, my name is Mark Benley and within 18 months of learning to code, I actually ended up doing six software engineering internships at companies like Figma, Netflix, NASA, and Tinder. And on this channel, my goal is to help other students land their dream software engineering jobs. So it's myth busting time. What the computer science major isn't. The computer science major is not just programming. It has a ton more that goes into computer science, including theory, physics courses, math courses, proofs, and a lot of things that are far higher level and theoretical than you might imagine. It really isn't just coding up cool apps or tinkering with HTML and CSS. In fact, I think I only even used HTML or React or any kind of web application development at one class out of my entire university curriculum. It's also not about making fancy websites or honestly fancy anything. This isn't really a place where you learn how to make innovative and cool startups that you might see over in Silicon Valley. The computer science major could prepare you to be the person who goes on to one day do those things, but it's in no way teaching you how to become that person or even how to build those things. And finally, the thing that I wish I knew earlier was that it really is very theoretical. It's what it sounds like. It's computer science. It's the science of computers. And it's not software engineering or software development. In fact, some universities even have software engineering degrees, which my mentor over at Tinder when I did an internship there had actually graduated from I think San Jose State software engineering degree and he mentioned how compared to computer science degrees that he saw other people graduate with his was far more practical to the work that he was doing there is this dichotomy between computer science and software engineering computer science majors often become software engineers but computer science is not software engineering okay so what is computer science Computer science is about problem solving, which means that you're going to have a lot of abstract problems you want to solve or learn about the abstract problems that really smart people, smarter than you and I, have kind of solved before us. It's also very math heavy. You're going to run into high levels of calculus, linear algebra, statistics, discrete math, and a few other sort of math courses. You should expect to have a, quite a good amount of math in your computer science degree. But again, this is not software engineering. You don't need to be great at math to become a good software engineer. And you're also going to do a lot of work that goes far beyond coding. You're going to have a lot of theory, um, like graph theory things to sort of understand. You're going to be analyzing the complexity of various algorithms and likely some algorithms that you're not going to really end up using ever in your professional career. You're going to understand the core of computers and computer architecture and how programming languages like Python or JavaScript are even implemented at the lower level. And you may probably see this recurring theme where we are dissecting deeper into the science behind things rather than just how to build on top of the existing computer and like technology that we have. Okay, so what are some of the job opportunities with the CS degree? Why do we feel like CS has just exploded in popularity lately? A big one is software development. This is probably by far the one that most computer science students end up picking where they become software engineers at big tech companies like Google or Facebook or honestly any other company. The world really is running on software right now. But the reason I mentioned those companies is because this is one of the big driving forces of getting people into the computer science degree. It's actually how I ended up wanting to get into computer science after knowing nothing about coding or Silicon Valley or anything like that. These big tech companies pay ludicrous amounts of money for new grad engineers, north of $200,000 for a kid fresh out of college. And they also provide relatively good work-life balance. Most of these companies offer a lot of really cool perks like free food and free lunches and all these kind of things. And so it is pretty unique to this field where you don't really see things like this in other industries. Another big one that you run into is data scientists. A lot of people sort of go down a rabbit hole of really enjoying to work with data. Um, and so data scientists are another thing that have like a lot of these big tech companies have. And if you're sort of taking the approach outside of the tech industry, we also have these firms primarily based out of New York and Chicago that are quantitative trading firms. I won't go too much into the exact logistics of how these quantitative trading firms operate or what they do, but the TLDR there is that they pay nearly double what the tech industry pays, which yes, double, like there's people making over $400,000 after graduating, but they do demand long hours. And so there is usually 
a work-life balance difference between these two, and one tends to be more math heavy or a little diff more difficult to break into. But again, it's hard to generalize every company or every role, and so some people may very likely have better work-life balance than let's say someone might end up with that a certain big tech company. There are some people who also go down the route of like academia. If you're interested in pers like pushing the edge of technology and research in the realms like artificial intelligence or any sort of other technological or computer science based realm, you likely want to go with a computer science major. And honestly, one of the things that I've personally felt is you have a lot of versatility with a CS degree. Like having a CS degree, I really feel like it's universally respected and it's a lot you're in a good position to be someone with a CS degree from a relatively good program. I think it's a lot easier to do everything else you'd like throughout your career, even if that means switching jobs, because it's just a generally respected degree, which is likely true for most engineering degrees out there. Okay, so I also want to take a moment to address some of the fears that I see related to choosing computer science as your major, because I knew that I had a ton of them when I was considering. The first one is that you think you're not set out to be an engineer or that it's too difficult. It's going to be too math heavy. You're not going to make it out. Trust me, just go for it. Like if you're really motivated about these things, you will persist and you will find a way out of it. I bet you faced this similarly in other times in your life where you felt like you really couldn't do something and you probably made it out of that situation. And so I, that's the advice that I would give you. When I was considering that switch, I went from psychology thinking about becoming a lawyer to sort of like business where I was gonna go into like finance. None of those were ever nearly as technical or math heavy as I was sort of up against in this world of like CS and engineering. And that was a big shift for me. Like I really didn't feel like I identified as an engineer, whatever that means now, but I didn't let it hold me back. And I'm very, very glad that I made that decision two years ago. And so I'd really encourage you to not let that stop you. The next one is that we really live in an AI boom right now. I think ChatGPT came out in November of 2022, if I'm not mistaken. And by now we've just been flying through the ropes. We now have GPT-4, things are accelerating at a very rapid pace. And there really poses some threats of, are, is the work of computer science degrees going to be outsourced or no longer kind of exist? My personal take on that, uh, and I'm no expert on this, but I do think that a CS degree and someone with experience in the world of software is always going to be useful. In all honesty, we're a long way out from really being able to predict when we might become absolutely obsolete. I used things like ChatGPT or GitHub's Copilot pretty often at my work at Figma, and it definitely does speed me up and make me more productive, but I don't yet feel like we're near the point where it can have all of the context that's needed to sort of run a software company or kind of like ideate on what's good to build, how things should be. I, th I think there's like a good amount of steps from where we're at and where we would need to go for me to get fired and replaced by some kind of like artificial God. And in the short term, again, these are just like great career paths to sort of go down. And honestly, in the AI revolution, you might wanna be part of the bucket of people who know how to kind of build AI rather than just the people who have no clue how any of this technology might work. So I, I can't promise you that nothing will happen. Um, I really don't know. Fingers crossed that we don't end up unemployed, but I do think that this isn't an immediate fear right now. And we're not that into the AI sort of races, I guess, for you to no longer pick a CS major instead of or out of fear of chat GPT kind of like taking over your life. So here's a bit about my personal experiences having picked this major. I ended up picking a major that was adjacent. So UCLA had this program where when I joined as a psychology major and then I switched to business, I was in the College of Letters and Science. And so one of the majors that existed within there was computer science and linguistics, which is sort of like a joint degree. And one of the things about my personal experiences that I think are really important to highlight here is that CS majors and sort of like the software engineering path is actually very unique for an undergrad because they have a really big funnel of paid internships for students to do. Like I mentioned earlier, I had done six internships internships, that really wouldn't be possible in other kinds of industries. In finance, it's a lot more difficult to land. It's kind of like an investment banking or private equity internship. Um, and in tech, there's sort of just like a big recruiting pipeline. So I know a lot of people who've actually chained paid internships together and graduated debt free or paid off their entire student loans while going to school solely because these internships paid north of like $50 an hour for students to come join a company for a summer. Okay, so the question of is CS the right major for you actually still remains here. And so the next thing I wanna do is share a little bit about what I've learned to be good versus bad reasons to pick the CS major. If you in any way identify yourself as a problem solver or someone who enjoys solving kind of like difficult problems, going down the iteration process of not knowing how to do something, 
putting in a degree of like hard work and eventually getting that outcome and finding that entire experience rewarding, then I do think you will enjoy the CS major. Not to say that you'll enjoy it when you're on that beginning end of not knowing how to do something, but I do think that the positive dopamine you'll get from kind of learn that learning process will keep you going. I also want to say that it's completely okay to pick the CS major because you're financially incentivized and want the sort of career outcomes that come with the CS major. That was honestly a fairly big reason that motivated me where nowhere else can I really get a similar compensation with good work-life balance. And so that is perfectly an okay reason. And so here are some bad reasons not to major in computer science. So don't let these stop you. First, if you've never coded before, or don't know much about coding. I promise you, you will learn and you will learn quickly. You're going to be immersed in classrooms full of people who code and you're just really going to throw yourself deep into this. And before you know it, you'll kind of be picking up on the iterations. That's what happened to me. I knew literally nothing about coding. I couldn't even I didn't I couldn't even imagine how like some basic sites are built, but it worked out. The next one is imposter syndrome. If you're worried that you can't do it, just please put that aside and start taking action. I've really found that the cure to imposter syndrome literally is just action. Just keep proving yourself wrong enough times and slowly enough, you'll chip away at the imposter syndrome and it won't be the next thing that surfaces in your mind when you're up against some kind of like difficult situation. And the other one is if you're watching this video and you're kind of like on the fence, you're tentatively exploring it and you're sort of leaning towards not doing it just because you don't know enough yet, please take the time and do some digging. Don't let this be the last video. Keep digging and keep learning more about the major and sort of what is out there because it really had changed my life. And I think it's something that you don't want to just brush aside. The career decisions that you make now and the majors that you pick actually stick with you for genuinely your entire life and take the intentional moment to sort of like really consider what you would like to do. But that said, here are actually some valid reasons to reconsider becoming a CS major because it's not all sunshines and rainbows. First, if you don't want just a typical desk job, and a computer science major, especially as a software engineer, we don't really get out all that much at work. Like you're going to have very long hours just sitting in front of a computer. And if that's something that kind of turns you away, then it's a very valid thing to consider. The next one is this concept of mental fatigue. It's actually not something that I had ran into until I went down this like software engineering path. But now I really understand what mental fatigue is and what physical fatigue is. In the past, I had sort of like played sports or felt what it's like to be physically tired. But now after work, some days I find myself just really mentally drained. But physically, I have a ton of energy. Another thing is if continuous learning sounds dreadful. I think one of the common traits of people in the CS major is that there, there is some kind of desire or passion for like the process of learning. Um, and I do think that'll get you pretty far. The CS major, like what computer science or software engineering looked like 20 years ago versus today is drastically different, or even 10 years ago is drastically different. And careers are pretty long. And so unlike other majors, like maybe if you go down a law path, the law doesn't change nearly that much quickly. Tech is a rapidly evolving sort of industry and you're going to be responsible for keeping up with it to stay relevant in your career. The next one is if you're just kind of seeking an easy degree, like computer science is not going to be that. It'll often be in very intense and you'll likely look back on those years and be pretty thankful that you've graduated. I know I am. And finally, it might be a little tough if you're only chasing the money without any sort of interest. I did start off motivated by sort of like the financial incentive and the work-life balance, but over time, that's what sort of pushed me to start. But I did find my own sort of passion for the work that I was doing. And so without that at all, if you really try it out and feel like you don't like this whatsoever, I do think that might get a little difficult to base an entire career off of. So now if you've made up your mind and you want to become a computer science major or explore the rabbit hole a little further, I recommend you check out this video where I share a lot of the misconceptions that I feel like 99% of computer science students end up making and what you should be doing instead. I'll see you in the next one.